Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackson, this is the most dangerous weapon. It's not nuclear, but it's because it's a nutshell. Yeah, the thumbnail makes me think that it's going to be about biological weapon topic, and obviously that makes sense. And I guess the growing concerns about the recent thing, uh, you know, growing concerns that it's probably you know lab made or whatever that is. Yeah, I, I can see where the video is coming from, right? Uh, and I have you know. Like I said in the past, like, you know, biology is not the topic that I'm, you know, it's my favorite topic, let's just say. It's not something uh, that I have much knowledge about. But one thing I don't know about that, that biological weapons can be really effed up. Like, you know, all the natural viruses that have ever been, those are nothing compared to how dangerous we can make it in a lab. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, something surprised me that there hasn't been a catastrophe like that in a long time because we, we've known how to make a biological weapon since a long time and I guess it's just like a nuclear weapon people know how devastating that can be and whoever is making that making sure that there is it's just airtight security and everything because by now we would have some really fucked up scenarios so yeah let's hope that shit doesn't happen uh, and I guess that's what you know because is going to talk about here I don't know but let's watch it a breathtaking scientific revolution is taking place. Biotechnology has been progressing at stunning speed, giving us the tools to eventually gain control over biology. Mm, On the one CRISPR. hand, solving the deadliest diseases, while also creating viruses more dangerous than nuclear bombs, able like to devastate man, right? humanity. What's going in order, in order to solve something, you also have to understand the worst side of it. So. The more biology we understand, the, the more we explore that, the more we know how to manipulate that in a bad way, right? Hang on. Biotech capability. Biotechnology is increasingly everywhere. The cotton in your mm. clothes, the vegetables you eat, your dogs. Humans manipulate living things. We use bacteria to produce insulin, connect prosthetics directly with our brains, and make industrial enzymes to produce paper. Gene therapy creates cures to previous. I don't want to pause too much, but this just made me realize that all the toxins that we consume one way or another nowadays, like uh, because of the recent thing, all the sanitizers and things that we, we've been using, yeah, that's going to mess up our biology a lot, right? Uh, there, there's a growing number of depressant cases that is rising in what this 21st century, past 20 or so years. And at the same time, our, you know, uh, exposure to this kind of chemicals are also high and obviously there's been many studies that links them uh, that you know lots of chemicals disrupt certain chemical process in your head and makes lots of uh, mental issues higher like you know uh, OCDs and things like that and all of that lead to depression eventually and depression is high because of that so yeah the more you know the more and more we use certain shit right it could be drugs and anything right and the more chances of mental imbalances there are like lots of drugs even we use like studies have been done like five ten years we don't know what a long-term effect is so i feel like by 2050 right we'll realize that some of the things we've been using was so catastrophic we shouldn't have been using that same thing as what was the cocaine or heroin that people used to use as a cough syrup like holy shit obviously untreatable diseases while we're working on food crops resistant to climate change our mastery over biology has been speeding up so much that within weeks of the first COVID-19 case, the unknown coronavirus was broken down in laboratories yeah, and analyzed. Yeah, that was an awesome thing. Even Scientists I noticed that. generated a copy of its genetic material to create a vaccine that was ready for testing months after the pandemic began. Yeah, throughout the history, anytime there's a virus outbreak, first of all, we just panic what it is, what it is, and it takes time just to identify it. That wasn't the case with this one. We identified it fast, tried to break it down. And the vaccine was relatively fast compared to everything else. At the time, it felt like forever, but it was relatively fast. And I know people have like, you know, vaccine doesn't work, this and that. I mean, yeah, but, you know, vaccine does work in that way. It does block it. People have this misconception. Vaccine just means completely 100% proof. No, that's not how it works. Something unthinkable a decade ago. Where is all this sudden progress coming from? Well, it's complicated. But in a nutshell, really expensive things got cheap and knowledge of how to yeah, do computers, impressive things damn sure. spread freely. The Human Genome Process Project starting fast. in 1990 was the first major attempt to read human DNA in its entirety. 13 years and $3 billion later, it was complete.
Okay, again, I don't know too much, but seriously, this makes me think that not just computer, now AI is like this next evolution of computers, right? A computer that doesn't just follow your command, but can think on itself in its way. So I guess AI is going to help that a lot. Eight. By then, the cost of decoding a human genome had fallen to about $100 million. Today, it's 100,000 times cheaper, costing only about $1,000. How is that possible? Converting DNA into computer data and then studying it used to be a super tedious process, taking expert humans around three years of manual work. Today, it takes about two weeks and is almost completely automated. Biotechnology has gone from something restricted to the best and well-funded laboratories staffed by the world's top experts to something affordable enough for hundreds of thousands of people to casually work on. What sped up the process even more is that information in the field is shared widely and freely. Cutting-edge discoveries now take just about a year to be copied in laboratories around the world, a few years for anyone with a biology background to work out, and a bit over a decade for high school students to experiment with them in schools. Hmm. Imagine that your local computer repair shop could build a pristine iPhone 11 with just the parts lying around, and that teenagers are asked to build a new iPhone 5 for homework. Not a crappy homemade version, the real thing. This well, teenagers do make iPhone. Okay, I'm only with that. Is what's going on right now in biotechnology a true revolution? We are adding knowledge at unprecedented rates, while things get ever faster and cheaper to do. This speed means we can expect even more wonderful things for humanity: life-saving treatments, miracle crops, and solutions to problems we can't even imagine right now. Mm. But unfortunately, progress cuts both ways. What can be used for good can also be used for bad, by accident, or on purpose. Well, that what if you could build everything. a nuclear bomb in your backyard? For all the good biotech will do for us, in the near future, it also could easily kill many millions of people. In the worst case, hundreds of millions. Jesus, look, okay. <laughs> you can't just like... Uh, nuclear bomb cannot just go off in its own. Like, it requires a, you know, complex enough process. But... A bio biological weapon, like I said, there's many security, but if it leaks, it's going to be very hard to contain. So I guess this is different in that way. Like nuclear weapons, I guess you can kind of control it and it can be just because of, you know, some accident. You can't just throw a bomb by accident. But a bioweapon can easily be an accident. Like, yeah, that's just after. I think only, even I said during the COVID times, like next security should be the international borders at least, right? screening of some kind international borders at least so obviously the first time when something spreads you don't know it and by that point it's in every country because people travel in all country all the time like it's very different 20 years from now 20 years before it's just like it was a rare chance in a way but now people travel everywhere all the time so at least international borders needs to be you know regulated this way so you know if something spreads you can at least cont contain it country by country at least worse than any nuclear bomb. The world just witnessed how fast the novel coronavirus spread. We yes. still don't know for sure if it came from nature or was the result of an accidental leak from a lab working with coronaviruses. That's still subject to scientific debate. In the end, at least 7 million people died. And this was still a relatively mild virus that didn't cause serious yeah. disease in most of those infected. It but this might change in the mild. future. Wherever the last pandemic... Imagine something like Ebola, if that spread, like, damn. ...and it came from, the next one might very well be our own fault. In a sense, many things going on in biotechnology could lead to this. Most of all, how easy it is to work with dangerous viruses. Thousands of scientists can simply order the genetic data of infectious virus samples online to experiment with them. Assembling these into an artificial virus in 2023 costs about as much as a new car, including all the lab equipment. At the same time, other scientists are trying to find viruses that hide in nature, like in wild bats or monkeys. There are probably plenty of potentially deadly pandemics out. Yeah, that's very, very cheap. If, uh, you know, something like that could just cost like a car. In a way, that's not that much. There, virus hunters take samples back to the lab to learn whether the newly discovered viruses are likely to spread in humans and catalog the danger. When a biologist discovers a new virus, they usually publish its genetic data to the public. Journals are eager to share descriptions of potentially dangerous viruses. Mm. Other labs go further and make viruses more dangerous. They combine and mutate different viruses 
to understand which mutations make them more Again, all the people, all the time say like, why would you do that? Why would you, why would you try to make a virus worse? The only way to learn it is to make it that way, right? Like, it's preparation for future. Like, trying to make as worse and worse a virus you can just to see if we can battle it or prepare for it. That's the reason behind it. There's no malicious intent there. People are like, oh, there's a no, there's no malicious intent. Right, the the labs. I mean, I don't know if that is like in military way, weaponized way. I don't know. But usually, when people trying to make a really effed up virus, is usually to see first of all if they can make it. There's a chance nature can make it too. So they try to do that just to see if that appears in the future, how to battle it, or if we can battle it, and at least see the characteristic like how long it stays in the body, how long before the symptoms comes, and you know, you, we can at least be prepared so it's, it doesn't blindside us more likely to spread between humans or make them deadlier than their original forms. And again, these results are shared freely. All while synthetic DNA and equipment to rebuild these viruses are sold online to anyone without any or very little tracking. As the tools of biotechnology get ever cheaper and easy to use, and the data on dangerous viruses keeps multiplying, it's only a matter of time before a well-meaning scientist shares blueprints for the equivalent nuclear bomb of viruses, a superbug that will cause millions of deaths, and mm. someone uses it. Maybe because they have bad intentions, maybe because they're irresponsible or sloppy. We're creating an environment in which it's increasingly easy for anyone to create a weaponized virus in their backyard. Yeah, look, I know people hate regulations, but in a society we need regulation. We, you know, regulation free is really fucked up. Uh, so I think, you know, just like you can't buy fucking uranium online or something, at least not that way. It shouldn't be that easy to just buy anything that could be weaponized biologically, right? It should be heavily regulated, right? Regular as in, you know, people need to be on, you know, on it. Like, why do you want it? What it is, right? Some security is needed. Do you have this? Can you secure it? And something like that. I don't know. This is scary. The world would be plunged into an unending crisis as new pandemics pop up year after year or all at once, killing large parts of the world's population. Oh, there's also that. Nuclear weapons can evolve. Biological weapons can. Right? It just depends on how the virus is released or how many of that release. Right? It could just ransack through the whole population and can evolve while doing it depending on the virus. So that's another issue. Doing unimaginable damage to civilization as a whole and possibly undoing centuries of progress. Yeah. What can we do? Turns out, a lot. It's not the first time we've faced a challenge like this, and we are not helpless. Think of nuclear technology. Something extremely powerful and dangerous with huge upsides and same. downsides. Nuclear energy was born from weapon programs, so its creators were always aware of the potential for their knowledge to be abused. From the very beginning, it was clear that knowledge in this field and access to the technology needed to be handled with utmost care. So a lot of effort has gone into making sure no radioactive material disappears from sight or that countries don't try to hide weapons development behind energy programs. The result hasn't been perfect, but considering the 411 nuclear power stations running today, we've been very successful. I don't like this uh, comparison because it's not the same like I said, right? Uranium and things like that are very specific. You can't regulate it and bombs are just, you know, like it's just there. You. It cannot just leak like it, you cannot leak a bomb and explore. At best, a nuclear reactor can go out of control, and that's it. Welcome to virus is very different. It's really hard to basically keep track of. Once it releases, you can't really control it. Like like he said, COVID was relatively not that strong, and look at the effect of it. Imagine if something really effed up, like I don't know, uh, you know, bubonic plague or Ebola, something like that. You know, modified version of that releases. And you can't really, you know, contain it. Like, the effect of that would be so devastating. Likewise, no researcher would think to share data on how to turn common laboratory equipment into bomb-making machines on the internet. There's no reason we couldn't handle the really dangerous aspects of biotechnology in a similar way. Experts have come up with three sort of bullet points. Okay. First, we need to delay the next deadly pandemic by getting a grip on how we treat dangerous viruses. Their genetic data should be treated as an info hazard. Information mm. that poses a danger to society if it's shared without care. In other words, not just anyone should be able to order dangerous DNA online. And if you do, you should Obviously. be tracked. So it becomes much harder for the wrong people to access the Regulation, what I said. The next step is detecting the danger. 
by becoming aware which viruses are present among us and are spreading explosively between humans. This could be as easy as having labs in population centers maintain virus detectors that monitor what's going on in the micro world. If we suddenly see certain microorganisms show up a lot in a short time, we can react quickly and start countermeasures. Yeah. Which is the final step yeah, yeah, to destroy. Hard. We basically need to build a machine that's ready to destroy any pandemic threat before it has a chance to take over. We can do this with new tools that are being developed right now, like nanofilters that put See the freedom and democracy uh, kind of getting that way, right? You really have to be an authoritarian if you want to stop some pandemic like that. That's not a good thing, is it? So, yeah, I think the first part is the only part that kind of works, that you need to regulate it. But, you know, uh, trying to destroy it, right? Like, you can't force people to have... I mean, you can try it, right? Uh, but, you know, it's not going to completely work, forcing people to have some kind of vaccine or something, right? It kind of worked, but didn't. And even then, people protest, like, you can't force me this and that, because, you know, yeah. And at the same time, it's really hard to track in the same way, right? You're not in an authoritarian state. Most countries are not. So, you know, you can't just track left and right. Like, there's always going to be gaps. So I think, you know, only first thing you can do is regu regulate it at a point that it doesn't leak. Because once it's leak, it's going to be really hard. Pull dangers out of the air we breathe, or specialized UV lamps that just kill any virus before it has a chance to jump from person to person. And of course, we need to get better at getting new vaccines faster than ever before in history. Yeah, but something that can hurt a virus is that instantly can hurt a lot of things inside you, I guess. So I don't know if people will be okay with that as well. If we do these three things... Unless they are, you know, brink of death, that would be different. The chances are really good that we can avoid a catastrophic pandemic in the future. Biotechnology, like any exciting and powerful technology, is neither inherently good or bad. It has the potential to be both in breathtaking ways. We have the chance to have a future where we get to truly control biology. Our biology. Mm. The biology of the plants and animals around us and the biology of the micro world. So let's use it to create a future where we triumph over pandemics and diseases for good. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. If you want to help and want to have a high impact on the world, check out the BioRisk Career Guide from 80,000 Hours a non-profit organization that helps people find careers that can tackle some of humanity's greatest problems in the most efficient way. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so again, that last portion of this video basically is entire like optimistic view that is because they're known for, that people take that as a, you know, different way, like, okay, it's, you know, the optimism is not really a bad thing. It doesn't matter how, uh, you know, wrong we may think it is. People take that as like Khazgazad is, you know, I don't know, so low to some corporates and this and that. But no, that's what Khazgazad does every time. Even to me, it felt like a bit too much optimistic in the end there. Uh, I'm not sure. So look, biological weapon is one thing that I don't think we can do much about it if it leaks, right? Unless everything just plunges into dictatorship, authoritarianism, where, you know, just all of your rights basically goes away and people just force everybody. That's just like another whole section of fucked up things. But that's not going to happen. I'm glad that's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, bad side of that is like you, you can't control something, right? Unless you control every single human completely, which is like no freedom at all, you can't control something like this. So, yeah, uh, if it leaks, we are completely screwed. But only thing, like I said, you can try to close off countries at least somehow. So, you know, very early, right? Screening and things. So I think detecting and regulating, that's the only thing we can do beyond that. I don't know. Right, well, that was the most dangerous weapon is not nuclear. I think people already kind of know that, right? Most people like biology weapon can be really fucked up and 2020 kind of showed that to people. But yeah, this was by the channel Kuzgazad. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.